And welcome everybody to another glorious episode of the Put On Raiders podcast. It was it's so good. We just had to just do an improv show because the Raiders have made some good moves. They made, they made, they made a good move here. They picked up KJ Wright. KJ Wright, um, the former, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks, um, works with Gus Bradley here for a long period of time. And I think this was the situation here, Ryan, where I'm here with Ryan Holmes as well. Um, this is a situation where I think people want to play for Gus Bradley. You're seeing that years and years and years of his um, relationship with players, the way he, I mean, I'm not sure people saw the conversation he had with uh, Richie Incognito uh, behind the scenes. Like those kind of conversations are why people love to play for him. And he's kind of a ride or die, um, you know, defensive coordinator who people really want to play for and who really want to show up for um, on a day in day out basis. They'll give you them. They'll give you everything they have, and I think this is one of the reasons why you know. And listen, because we, we we can talk about the money part of it with KJ Wright, and maybe if he got a better offer, he might have went somewhere else. But this was a good move by the Raiders, and I think it's a good move by KJ Wright as well. Definitely, it's an opportunity for KJ Wright to come in, uh, play heavily early, and he's, in my opinion, he's going to play in the base personnel as well as in the nickel. So he's going to have an opportunity to be an every down linebacker at least for the first half of the season until we know what's going on with Moreau or even uh, Javin White. But you're right. There's six defenders on this team that have played under Bradley. He's got two at each level, uh, Ngakwe, Bailon, uh, Perryman, and right now, and then Hayward and Teamer uh, on the back end. So he's got two guys at each level of this defense that have played for him uh, that are willing to come to Las Vegas and play. And I'm sure KJ, right? The Raiders don't have a ton of cap room, so I'm just, It'd be my assumption he would have something similar from the Seahawks or another team as far as offers. Mm-hmm. I think it just came down to or a week before the season and the ability to, to play 100% of the snaps because I, I don't see him coming off the field until Nick Moreau's healthy. And even then, he may stay on the field. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I know but people immediately are, are want, want to know what number he's, number he's going to wear. I don't care what number he wears. I mean, you got Diablo wearing five now, so which, 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 looks pretty sick as far as that goes. But but the thing, the thing, that big thing about here about Gus Bradley is, yes, people came to follow him to Las Vegas, but it also people came off the people came to follow him in Las Vegas who can still play, like Yannick can still play. Uh, you know, Casey here, we can still play. KJ Wright, one of the guys who can still play, and that's a part of the that's a big part of what they're trying to do is get people in there who can still play and make plays for a defense that's been much maligned for a long period of time. Definitely most of those six guys, most of them are still in their mid to late 20s other than KJ Wright. So Phylon's still young, Ngakwe's young, Teamer's young, Perryman's only 28. Um, so the only two that are probably over 30 are, are clearly Wright and Hayward. I don't know Hayward's age off the top of my head, but I guess he's somewhere 31, 32 mm-hmm. years old. Um, but no, KJ Wright, this is not – um, the Raiders signing an old washed up linebacker at the end of his career. This isn't Derek Johnson all over again. This guy is going to come in and be a playmaker on this defense. And, and there's a good opportunity that we may look back four or five weeks in the season. He might be the best defender on this team. Um, so this guy is going to be a difference maker. Yeah. And I think too, it, the, I think it's cool that he came in now. There's no rigors of preseason or anything like that. Um, obviously he's in shape. Um, there's a Perryman past his um past his physical now and he also i think it's mentioned he mentioned that he might be uh, more inclined to take the vaccine now <laughs> than, than, yeah. than, than before i mean that could be who, who knows who knows how that who knows how that went down but i'm um, listening a great good move by the raiders good move by kj Wright. um you know and this could lead to obviously a big contract for him later on if, if he's able to you know the raiders are able to like maybe move on from somebody else to, to have him come in next year or for him to go somewhere else it, it, it just makes sense to be able to play somewhere. If you went to Baltimore, went to somewhere else, it wouldn't have the same impact, I think, because he'd be learning a defense and have to wait till like mid- midway through the season, Ryan, to like to, to understand what was going on. Yeah, Baltimore runs a 3-4 defense. KJ Wright's only ever played in a 4-3 under defense that, that Gus Bradley runs, and then Pete Garrell also has up in Seattle. So he's never played in a 3-4, so he would have to learn a whole new defense in Baltimore. So... This gives him an opportunity to hit the ground running week one. He knows the defense. He's going to play 100% of the snaps, and he's got a one-year deal, so he's going to be able to hit the market uh, again next year. So this basically worked out. This is everything that he was looking for. I don't think Seattle was going to have him play much in the nickel with Wagner uh, and then Jordan Brooks, who they drafted last year. So um, broken the Raiders' favor here to get a player of this caliber this late to can really elevate the defense. 
I mean, obviously, I, I want to thank Jordan Brooks for um, <laughs> having a cheaper contract and elevating his game so he, so, so he could be expendable as well. In the locker room, that brings, like, a whole different dynamic. They have some real – like, we can – we can talk about the Raiders and talk about all this other stuff and all the other ancillary stuff, but like this is, and they players and players and fans know who can really play. This is not a guy who we're hoping can play. This is an alpha dog who you bring into the, bring into the building, who knows the defense unquestioned. Nobody's going to be like giving him side eye when he's barking out, barking out signals or, or telling, or telling people what they should be doing in his defense. This is a, this is a big time move. This adds another dog to the, to the defense, like you said. I mean, we're going to look out there. They're going to have John Abram out there. They're going to have K.J. Wright. Denzel Perryman's going to get snaps. Max yeah. Crosby. Um, they're going to have some dudes out there um, that are physical and want to play football. So this defense, before the addition of K.J. Wright, I was thinking, you know, somewhere around 20th in the league. They, they have a chance to get up in around 15, 14, 15, 16 in the league in total defense with this move. Uh, there's no no excuses for the 2021 Raiders anymore. Um, no. This defense should keep them in enough games uh, to where 10 and 7, 11 and 6 should be a realistic goal. Yeah, I mean, they were in it with a lot of teams, a lot of teams who were playoff teams, and they beat some playoff teams last year without this kind of firepower defensively and these pass rush. I, I just, my biggest thing is every time I look and I see like the whole dynamic between um, Yannick and, and Max Crosby, I just, that is, that's something I'm really excited for. And I know, I know you're, you're, you're attending the first game of the year, right? And, um, and, and yep. Legion Stadium, the, the first real game. So that, that's going to be an exciting situation. I'll be, I'll be here watching it, but you know, that that's going to be cool to see um, as far as that goes. We mentioned the, um, the uh, salary cap part of it. Um, what had to happen here for him to get signed? I, I know that um, I think it was Kwiatkowski had to change up his kind of contract a little bit. How did that work? Yeah, they basically took two point nine million dollars of his salary and converted it to a signing bonus uh, and added three voidable years. So you know, as we've talked about, teams can create space when they want to. Uh, what it did, and for me, and I tweeted about this, I thought it was a selfless move by Kwiatkowski because not only did he create room for another linebacker he basically gave away his snaps because he was going to play in the nickel um so not only did he take one for the team here um this might ensure that he's actually on the roster next year too because they have a five million dollar yeah. cap hit if, if they release him so yeah. um good for him uh that's a great move to help the team overall uh those avoidable years will come back to get the raiders uh, two years down the line they're going to take a cap hit whether he's on the roster or not in 2023 um yeah. but at the end of the day um that this is the way to do it. You add voidable years to contracts and you, and you bite the bullet two years down the line when the cap hopefully is 30 or $40 million higher. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense here. Um, like really quick um, before, I, 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 don't, I don't know, we had a full show to go over the 53-man roster. Um, any big surprises here as the practice squad, as the practice, as the practice, squad, practice squad gets um, underway and, and people who we want to come back come back and some people who we really didn't didn't want to come back come back as um as Daryl Levitt down Le Mr. Levitt comes back as well too yeah and that's just a special teams play at this point he's he's going to be yeah. active on, on game days he's going to be running down covering kicks um the fact they went five wide receivers uh, and kept four tight ends was a little surprising to most people clearly Nick Bowers uh, got that extra spot just due to his size and run blocking ability because he's 6'4 265 uh, whereas the other tight ends he was up against were more receiving type guys. But uh, that allows the Raiders to get big into big personnel and run the ball and not have to rely on Derek Carrier and, Dar and Darren Waller as blockers at the point of attack. Um, as far as defensively and the practice squad, the practice squad was, was kind of what we thought. They kept a bunch of guys they were familiar with. They know their vaccine status. Uh, they know the playbook. They've been in camp. Um, it was interesting to see they went out and added two long six foot two corners and Madre Harper and Robert Jackson. So clearly Gus Bradley wasn't happy uh, with the, the corner depth, the guys that he had in camp. Um, and then just adding some offensive linemen. It was good to see them add that, that extra tackle today to the, to the 53 man roster. We were waiting for who the, who the fourth tackle was going to be. Um, so I'm glad they were able to do that. Uh, and it's a guy that played eight games last year in the league for, for New England. So this guy has played uh, and he can play some guard too. So there's some versatility. Wait. Wait, he, he he played for New England. Eight so he's games a pro he bowl. started. No, not yet. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pro. Yeah, <laughs> the pro bowler. Like said, if you say if you say there, he'd be a pro bowler. Um, so is so with the um, you're looking at a lot of twelve personnel for the, for this Raider team, and then um, do you see them flexing Waller out to the as the X receiver in this in, in this in this 
in this scheme uh, a lot with what the Raiders are going to do in, the, in this in 2021? He's going to play all over the offense. He'll be in line. He'll be detached. He'll, he'll go in motion. They'll have him play the X. Uh, there's probably going to be plays where, where he's coming in motion and playing the Z. I, I don't know what John Green's going to do with him. You may line him up in the backfield. Um, but he has the freedom now to move him wherever he wants. Yeah. And, yeah, and they do have, I mean, listen, the four, but the four um, carrier can make some plays. Um, if, if, and then also where we are as Ray Nation goes, we are looking for the reemergence of, of Austin Moreau. Um, we, cause we, you know, the, the stupid injury that he had, I don't know why that like, little white sheet of plastic is on the field when he got hurt the first time. And then last year it was very difficult to watch his snaps go away from, um, from him when we talked about, um, you know, um, uh, Mark Witten or the J- Jason, I would say Mark Witten, sorry. Yeah. I got baseball on mine. Um, the, the Jason Witten like that, that was, that was just sickening to watch that as far as that goes. But I um, just want to give you a kind of a quick rundown of, you know, it was big news today that the Raiders picked up KJ, right? Um, a move that pretty much, you know, is a solid, it's, it's, just no, it's a great football move, a great financial move for them um, for all the parties. And I think the Raiders will, um, read the benefits of this because I think I am like you're always pumped for first game of the year but I think Raider Nation from the DMs I've been getting and everything I've been talking people have been talking to me blowing up my phone it's been um it's going to be a fun it's going to be a fun time people are going to be pumped up for this for this opener against the Ravens definitely and the biggest thing for me is it allows them to play a 4-3 base defense because if they didn't have him and they had Kwiatkowski and Perriman are both Mike middle linebacker neither one of them yeah. is a strong side guy so they would have yeah. had to rely on Tanner Muse to get snaps he's not ready um, so they can play as much pace as they want. Uh, they're perfectly mm-hmm. fine uh, running out Littleton and right on the outside and then having Perryman and Krakowski split it up however you want in the middle and then going to nickel now. They can go to the nickel uh, and rely on two two guys in Littleton and right that can play there, whereas before they would have had to rely on Perryman or Krakowski as, as the nickel backer. And neither one of those guys is really that. So mm-hmm. this move allows them to play nickel and base as much as they want without much of a drop off. Yeah, a whole, a whole lot. And we'll go over that on our, on our next episode. But there's a whole lot of DBs on this team too, who are um, big, strong, athletic, and um, I think I'm anxious to see. You know, I mean, we we are also Mull- um, Trayvon Mullen fans, and I think this is good. this is this is going to suit him very well playing across playing across from Casey Hayward here um, going yep. forward. All right, Ryan, um, thanks for coming on, hopping on real quick, and then we'll we'll see you next time. All right, no worries. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Yeah.